What's up guys, thank you for joining, I know it has been a while. Today guys, I have a really nice topic, we're gonna talk about this external tool, this awesome external tool called Bravo. Bravo is a tool developed by the SQL BI team. And today guys, today I'm gonna teach you all the details, all the secrets my friend, so stay tuned. Like it says right here, Bravo is a free and open source external tool that helps you create a Power BI model by using a simple user interface. So it's quite straightforward. If you haven't downloaded this tool, so you may wanna go to this website right here, copy this one right here, and then go to Google, type it here, and then you are good to go. Hit download and then follow the steps. So once you download the software, you're gonna have something like this and then just follow the steps there, okay? When everything is done, you can go over here, external tools, and then you will have this option right here called Bravo. And that means that you already installed this software. So what does Bravo do? Four different things. And I'm gonna go over those four things in this tutorial, okay? Analyze model. So with this tool, what you can do is you can identify what the most expensive columns or tables in your model are. So that's really helpful because you wanna save memory, right? You're gonna save space and you wanna identify which columns you're not using. Perhaps you can delete them, right? It's quite helpful and let's do this real quick. Let's hit Bravo. Remember, you will have this option once you install this program. So it's opening and then automatically the current Power BI report is right here and it can give you a profile right in terms of analyzed model so we can clearly see here we can expand this the sales the sales column has 14 percent of your memory right for this particular model and then you can keep playing, right? If you don't, if you're not using this column, you can easily delete it. If it doesn't have any type of impact on your results. But let's do something really interesting here. Let's open a new report. So you can see right here, browse. And let's look for a different report, okay? How about this one right here? Let's open this. It's gonna take a few seconds. Okay, so this is the report. Let's go back to Bravo real quick. So Bravo is right here. As you can see, you now have the new Power BI report here. So this is called Internet Sales Performance at this Excelization. And then if you take a look at sales order number, so you can see that 48% of memory is consumed by this column, right? And the other interesting part of this feature is that it's giving you some type of recommendation. It says right here, this is an unreferenced column and you can easily remove it. So the main idea here is to optimize your model, right? Performance. If we're not using this column, we can easily delete it. So let's do that real quick. Let's go back to the report. So it's right here. So let's go to transform data. We're gonna use here Power Query. And right here, this is the column that we're not using, right? So it doesn't matter. We're gonna use this in the future editor so we can easily delete it. Right click, remove. If we do that, let's apply the changes here, close and apply. And then we don't see any changes in your visuals because we're not using that column. So let's go back to Bravo real quick. You can still see it, right? But let's refresh it and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. It says 48%, but if you expand, we have different columns there. So the initial column, the sales order, the sales order that we had initially, it's removed. So now this is the way that you can use this tool to optimize your models. Good feature there. So now let's take a look at the other feature. Format DAX, this is also really cool. So here, remember, when we are learning DAX, we can easily write code in just one line. 
And it's okay if your code is not too long, but if it's long and more complicated, you have more cal uh, more complicated calculations, if you're gonna debug your code in the future, you may get lost. So it's really, really helpful if you can format your DAX code. And this tool helps you do that. So let's do this real quick. Let's go back to Bravo. And right here, let's hit Format DAX. And we have our measures here, right? We have different measures. So let's select one, for example. Freight previous year. As you can see, we wrote the code in just one line. And it's quite fine for now because the code is small. But if it was larger, uh, we would be in trouble. Uh, let's select this measure again and then let's hit format selected and let's see what happens check this out congratulations one measure was formatted done let's select the measure again there you go this is the suggestion that this tool is giving you right so now you can easily read the code how about another one right here same story here select the measure and then format selected Congratulations, one measure was formatted successfully. Done. Select the measure again. Boom. There it is, my friends. That's how it works, my friends. Now let's move back to the previous report. So the other feature, it's another cool feature, manage dates. So with this feature, what you can do is you can customize your calendar table or your date table. Sometimes it's tricky to create your own calendar table. If you're still if you are just learning Power BI, remember that a calendar table is required if you're dealing with dates. So how do we do this with Bravo? Let's go back to Bravo. It's right here. So as you can see right here, it says manage dates is inactive. Go back to here. I'm going to use this report, okay, for this purpose. It's still inactive, manage dates. Why? We have to disable the auto date time feature in Power BI. Let's do that. So this is our report. Let's go to File, Options and Settings, Options here. It's loading and there is a feature here and let's do this just for the current file, Data Load. Right here, as you can see, it's selected the auto date time feature. Let's unselect this one. Let's hit OK and let's save the changes, OK? And let's see what happens. So let's go to Bravo again and let's refresh it and let's see what happens. So automatically you can see that this is active now. And you have a few options here as well. So you have different types of templates. We're going to do just the standard for, for this exercise. And you can see right here a preview. It automatically scans your dates in your model. Okay. And then interval. We don't have to do anything there. Like it says right here, automatic scan, dates, some more information here, holidays. There are more details here as well. This is based on the United States. Another cool feature here is time intelligence. So you can create time intelligence calculations as well. So you can do that with this tool as well. So let's see. Let's choose measures here and let's select all measures. Okay. And let's see what happens. So once we select this feature, so let's hit preview changes and let's see what happens. So now you can see a calendar table here and also time intelligence calculations, right? Awesome feature. So now that we are okay with these changes, let's hit apply changes and check this out. Done. Let's go back to the report. Check this out, my friend. There is a calendar date table here or calendar. So there is a calendar table here or date table. It's right there, right? So you can check this out right here, date. There you go. So you have different options there for your calendar table. And then if you go back to measures, now you can, now you can see here a folder where all the time intelligence calculations are stored. For example, growth, we have more folders here and then you have more calculations, right? Month over month percentage of cost of goods sold, for example. And then you can explore the other ones as well. 
different types of calculations. And you don't have to do this manually because this tool, this external tool is doing the job for you. You can play with that. Maybe you can remove what you don't want, but the tool is giving you the results, right? So let's go back to Bravo again. So now let's go back to the report real quick. So the other feature here is export data. This is also a quite helpful tool. Okay, let me show you how it works. Let's go back to export data here. And here you can select any table, right, in your model. For this particular report, we can select the date or the calendar table that we just created, or you can select just one table. For example, financials only, you can do that. And then you have a couple of options here. You can export as an Excel file or a CSV file. It's up to you. If you export as an Excel file and you're exporting different tables, so those tables will be stored in just one Excel workbook, but in different tabs. Okay. If you are exporting this as a CSV, so you have to export this to a folder and then you will have different files in that folder. Okay. For this exercise, let's export just the financial table and then in an Excel format and let's see what happens. Check this out. Let's select right here the folder and let's hit save. Boom. Done. If you go back to the folder, here it is. This is the table that we just exported. So let's open it just for the example. Boom. There it is. This is a financial table and also there are some type of information here related to this table. Another cool feature here is now is that you can also export data or tables from the cloud. Let me show you how it works. See right here, datasets on PowerBI.com. Let's hit this option. And here you have different datasets, right? Let's select Bravito for now. Let's open this. And we're going to see the options there. Okay. Here, the only option that it's active is export data. So let's say that we want to export this table called Bravito. As you might remember, we can only export 150,000 columns in Power BI, unless that this has changed in the last few weeks. But here, as you can see, we have 200,000 rows. Guess what? We can use Bravo to export more than 150,000 rows. Let's do that. Excel file again, export selected, select the folder where you're going to export the file and then hit save. Check this out. It's going to take a few seconds, but it's working, my friends. Perfect. So now you can now you can see that we exported this Excel file done. Let's check that. Let's go back to the folder here again and here it is, right? Let's double click this and see if this is working. Here it is, my friends. Check this out. Let's count the number of rows. 200,000. Bingo, my friends, we were able to export more than 150,000 rows with this tool. There you have it, my friend. If you haven't played with this feature, it's highly recommended. I want to thank Marco Russo and his team as well. Good job, guys. Thank you for providing this free tool. And also, if you have questions, comments, leave them in the section below and see you guys in my next tutorial. Thank you.